This video from Sam Forresta, we're taking another look at cashback on the ER900 series of tools. Um, so in my previous video on cashback, I showed you method one for accounting for cashback sales. We, in that video, we set up a received on account and paid out button to account for someone paying you money by card and you giving them money back um, in cash and then making sure that your till balanced up. Um, so I'll quickly show you how that works. If you've not seen that video, by the time we'd programmed the till, when we were in the register mode, we could press this button here, which was received on account two, reprogrammed to be cash back card in. We would then ring 20 pounds, hit our card button, hit the cashback button again and that would uh, enable the till to account for a £20 card payment in outside of a normal sale and then we set up a paid out to button um, which we could then use to account for the cash going back out when we did our end of day report in this case just an X report <coughs> so we've got £20 card payment in £20 cash payment out we've got no sales but the figures have been adjusted so that our cash in draw is £20 down and the card in draw is £20 up. So that function works. If, if, if you prefer to use that functionality, then by all means check out that video, which I'll put a link to in the description of this video. And it'll also appear as one of your optional videos um, at the end of this one. However, there is another, another way of doing um, cash back on these machines whereby you can reprogram what Sam 4S call the charge buttons. So down here we've got charge two, charge one, and then we've also got a cash button. So in this video, we're gonna reprogram our charge one button to allow for over tenders and for the change to come off the cash in draw total um, so that everything should add up. But what we'll do in the video is first of all, I'll show you how, why you have to do that in the first place, then I'll show you how to do it, and then we'll take a look at how it works. So on not just Sam 4S and the 900, but all cash registers in general, if you are in the register mode, ringing through a sale with a, it's often not exactly 20 pounds. If, if they pay by cash, they'll give you a 20 pound note, and the cash button is designed to show you how much change to give and to facilitate the giving of change. The card buttons or the charge buttons, as Sam 4S call them, are totally different because obviously a card payment is normally a specific amount of money. Um, so 1987, if you try and ring through, um, they say pay by card and you over, you do what's called an over tender, you're just going to get an error message because the card payment would usually be the exact amount of money. So that's why the machines are set up that way. Um, so what we're going to do now is reprogram our charge one button to be a called card. We're going to have it to be allow the over tender and then we're going to allow it to give the change in cash um, instead of card. Um, so this is like quite fairly complicated programming. If, if you're looking at this video without having ordered your till already I would, and you want this functionality, I'd definitely spec it because it, I've got to be honest, it's not something if I was programming a till I'd put on there necessarily as standard, um, so it's quite a, a niche feature. Um, it is in the manual, but the manuals are written for dealers because these machines are designed for dealers um, to sell them and set them up and support them. So when you're trying to wade through the manual trying to find this, it would be that be really difficult and a lot of trial and error um, would go on. But if you want to know what page I'm getting the information from, the main piece of information is a chart on page 120 of the ER900 operation and programming manual. And I'm basically going to use the flow chart at the top of that page. And then I've worked out to save you some time um, that the code I want for the button to allow the functions that I want is that. Um, so yeah, what we will do is we'll just clear the machine down first to make sure that there's no sales. So what I want to be able to do is to look back at it and show you um, the, the function that I've set up, how it actually renders on the report. So we can go to the program mode to start with. So we need the metal key marked P and then we're following the flow chart on the top of page 120. 
which is this, but with this code put in, and then we're programming the charge one button because that's the one I always use for card. So it is 70, subtotal 5200003, zero, 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 charge one, and then cash. That's the function status set up for this. What I would do is don't do this yet yourselves. Um, I'd watch this video all the way through and make sure you're 100% happy that A, you actually want the function, B, that you understand what you're getting from the function, and C, you know you understand exactly how to do it. Because if you get something wrong in this level of programming, it can be difficult to put it right again. Um, what we'll also do while we're here is give the um, the function a name, so I'll show you how to change it from charge one to card. I mean, let's face it, what does charge one mean? Just makes it a bit more professional, I think. So that, again, that's shown on page 120 of the manual, but it's also written down there, 80 subtotal. You then type in the description, so you'll need your alpha um, keyboard, which I'm sure you're familiar with if you're looking at this sort of programming. You can put in card payment or whatever you want, but I'll just keep it short and sweet with card. Then quantity time, then you press the function button that you're programming, so for us that's charge one, and then cash to save. We won't put a halo on, but in theory you can put a high amount limit on the function. What we're also going to do is change the um, name as it appears on the report so instead of having like charge one sales and charge in draw i'm just going to quickly show you how to reprogram those um, so you stay in the program mode because what it just makes it confusing on your end of day report it just it, it doesn't mean anything if you're taking it says on the receipt card payment you really want to say it, the same description on your end of day reports so in the program mode it's 701 subtotal and then you need to I'm getting this information, by the way, um, actually from the 5200 manual and on page 153 of that. But this would be a flowchart that you really want to find. Um, it's basically this flowchart we're following, and then the line of the re the line of the report message. I'll leave this up so you can have a look at it for a while, or you can pause the video. When we do the 701 subtotal. The X is the line number, so we're going to adjust charge in draw and charge one sales to say card in draw and card sales. Um, so the first one was line 55. You then press the quantity time button. So we're editing line 55, which currently says, or as default says, charge one in draw. We'll quickly change that to... Where are we? That's G, I've got a backspace there. Oh. Card in draw. Then when you've typed in your description, it's subtotal, and then cash, and then we'll just quickly change the other line. 701 subtotal, 63 is the charge one sales, quantity time. This will make a lot more sense when you see the end of day report. We'll just quickly change this one to card sales, card, space, sales, Um, that's the description, then it was subtotal and cash. So that is the programming done. We have edited the charge one button to enable a overtender and for the change to come off the cash in draw total. We've also edited the description to be card and we've also hopefully edited the right lines on the um, financial report so that it makes sense. So we'll give it a go. We're going to ring in an odd amount of money. So let's do that now. Let's say 19, 90, 19, 11. Let's say that 19 pounds, 11 P into our drinks button. Now, previously on the machine, 
we couldn't do an overring, but now we're going to do £40 because the customer says, I want to pay by card, but I want some cash back on it. So we now hit the charge button. It comes up and says card on the display. It gives us the chains, £20 and 89p. If we've got a receipt on, we get a receipt printing out and obviously the drawer also opens. So you've been able to give them £20 and 89p in cash back. And then we can do an end of day report on the subtotal. And what we're hoping to see, well, let's take a look. We've got our sales figure here of £19.11p, which is correct. 19.11 for sales. Our cash in drawer is £20.89 pence down because we gave the guy £20 cash back. And the card in drawer is £40. Card sales is 19.11 because that's correct because that's the sales. The other thing is just accounting for different um, tenders so so that's worked so that's how to set up the charge one button to enable um, cash back to be run through it obviously you just got to be aware the implications of that for your business so make sure you understand that fully and then also feel free to check out the other video I've done which I'll put on screen now showing you the other way of doing it where we set up paid out and received on account button so yeah i hope that video has been helpful um uh, food for thought anyway um please check out our other videos you can also subscribe to this youtube channel or visit samforesthelp.co.uk for more thanks for watching